Hi, this slide is about uh, side three of the hexagon, which is just basically how we incorporate financial numbers uh, into our high performance environment. And what's interesting is for a lot of businesses, this is all there pretty much is. I mean, some people will have a, a handful of generic uh, service quality metrics, you know, errors per thousand line items, uh, fill rates measured uh, in some mechanical way on the computer. Nobody's really quite sure, you know, how disciplined or controlled that is. Um, you know, on-time shipments and so forth. But um, from a financial numbers viewpoint, as far as the whole service performance team, uh, really, you know, we're not going to be that concerned about uh, personnel costs. In fact, and historically, it was all about hiring them cheap and working them hard and headcount and how many different ways can we, you know, cut payroll costs uh, since uh, Q3-08 when we had the global financial cardiac arrest. Um, the goal here now is actually we're going to grow uh, personnel compensation packages to above average for their job niche and the industry uh, and, the, and the marketplace you're in. Uh, and so what numbers aren't people cost that everybody can worry about? So one of them would be what are all of the expense items that we spend not on us but on something else? And the idea is if we can be frugal about that, like the light bills or uh, – cleaning costs and so forth, if we could be frugal, which doesn't mean we're not going to do it, we're just going to do it in the most efficient way, uh, then that money can pay us as opposed to something else. And uh, one of the great examples of frugality was Toyota when they put in the just-in-time manufacturing system in a new paradigm. They came up with uh, two million new ideas of doing things ever better in the new paradigm for about 20 years. Now, at some point, that paradigm is all tricked out and highly efficient and so forth. And so that at some point, there's a life cycle to, to how many new ideas are going to come bottom up. And maybe you need a new paradigm for manufacturing by then. Um, so the idea of, you know, paying us, not someone else is, 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 a, is a good motto or mantra. Uh, another one to look at is a damaged goods uh, or inventory shrinkage. So what are our systems to do that? Because if at the end of the year, the inventory actually expands because manufacturers can overship us. We can be honest and report it, and they say, ah, it's the, the dollars are immaterial for the cost of reversing it, just keep it type of thing. In theory, our inventory could actually increase in value. Um, another huge area to look at is safety and making sure that we have zero accidents. Uh, there's a wonderful case study on Alcoa's safety program uh, that they did. Uh, where it was something the unions couldn't fight, but to actually be super safe, you also had to be super lean, super efficient, super rethink all the service processes, uh, which broke down barriers to allow the company to find kinds of productivity in all other categories, not just safety. Um, so there are uh, financial cost elements that we can share. An example of a drama exercise that I've done in the past is I start with an overhead projector and I put coins. Uh, make sure you get the right array or mix of them at the beginning on the overhead projector. So I say, all right, we have a dollar of sales. And how much of that gets taken away? So three quarters get taken away and we give it to the supplier. So it leaves a quarter and then we break the quarter down into dimes and nickels and pennies. And we start to say, oh, let's take a personnel cost. So there goes there goes 60% of the, of the margin dollar. So now we're over 40%. We finally get down to, okay, there's one, two, three pennies, four pennies left of the dollar for operating profit before we pay taxes to the city, the state, and the government. So there goes half of, of the, that money to the governments because they can invest it and spend it more wisely than the private sector can as opposed to our reinvesting back in the business. That's how you create libertarians out of everybody. Um, and then you sort of say, all right, so really not much gets to the bottom line and it all goes back in the business, which is the cost of your future. Um, but what happens if we have damage of $100? We drive around the forklift and we actually spear a box of something or other and it's worth $100. And so we go back to the little, you know, penny thing and we say, oh, well, you know, if we, if we have a 25% margin, we have to sell four cases, you know, at, uh, with $25 of, of markup in it each time to get the $100 back. But then you point out that, yeah, but every time you have another order, you have all these activity costs in the organization, and 80% of the costs are variable costs, so that eats up a lot of the margin dollar. So really, we need to you know, look at the bottom line, or maybe something a little bit bigger, throwing in fixed cost you know, uh, benefits, to 
sell maybe 10, 20, 30 cases of this stuff to get enough margin dollars to replace the cost of one damaged item. So the question is, how do we cut down back to safety, accidents, uh, you know, and waste not, want not, and how does that pay and reward us? This, this connects all of those ideas together. Otherwise, uh, financial numbers are, are really third, fourth level byproduct symptoms of all of our service value strategies and metrics. So focus on all those input efforts and the output efforts, the output numbers from a black, so if we have a black box and we're doing a lot of inputs into it and out the other end of the black box are coming financial numbers, we know that if we continue to improve our input numbers, over time the financial numbers will start to get better. I did mention in an earlier presentation that one uh, sort of captivating metric that people like to look at from a financial viewpoint was what's the 12 month trailing gross margin dollar per FTEE as full time equivalent employee for 12 months and I had a number of locations and they were all into comparing who had the best and who had the best trend line for doing that but even even the guy that had the best or had the best trend line what was the structural historic accidental reasons why they had the best numbers to begin with but then as far as trend improvement that 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 had to do with with uh, continuous improvement inputs and that's where we started having some best practice learning that could go on but that that whole concept is value metric measurably gross margin dollars is the value the customers want to reward us with for people so what's our value generated per warm body uh, and I think that's a good way of framing it so that's it for uh, financial numbers in the hexagon system thank you